Oh, nuts. It doesn't come with nuts. nuts. Ooh, a sticker. I don't have a freaking sticker yet. Alrighty then, I picked up four of these Navitas. Police Navitas. I don't know. Four of these uh, LifePo 4 Prismatic batteries from Battery Hookup because they were super cheap and well of course i'm super cheap and i really wanted to test them out because i'm kind of looking for like an instant power wall or something like that that's a little bit easier to build and safer and possibly add it to my current system now which translates into i am trying to get out of building my next 18650 battery packs Shh. Now, I am not saying this is the correct or right way to go, but how cool would it be to have a crap ton of these? You know, they're all brand new. They're all the exact same cell. You know, how cool would it be to have a big ass power wall with these if they capacity test good? And that's what we're gonna find out today. All right, I bought four of these for $12.50 a piece, which ends up being $50. However, I used my discount code BOOM for 5% off and it ended up being $47.50. Actually, that's a lie. I use somebody else's discount code so I can help support their YouTube channel. You know, I mean, it takes time and effort. A lot of us buy this stuff to do the review, find out, you know, what's good or what's bad. So why would I use my own discount code? I mean, you would have to be some sort of crazy m Sorry, I digress. Now where was I? Oh yeah, that's right. I got four of these. I ordered them on a Tuesday and I got them on a Saturday. So whoever is complaining about slow shipping, that was like four days. Okay, so today we're gonna be capacity testing these cells, maybe even at 1C if we can, to find out if they are actually 25 amp hours. Are they even worth it? We're gonna find out. All right, I'm gonna read some of the specs here real quick so we know what's going on. All right, so nominal capacity is 25 amp hours, and that is at a temperature of 25 plus or minus five degrees Celsius at a 1C discharge. Internal impedance is four. The weight is 660 plus or minus 20 grams. Max charge voltage is 3.65 volts. Cutoff discharge voltage is two volts. Standard charging method is 1C, constant current, constant voltage. Again, the same temperature. Maximum continuous discharge current, 3C. So that's 75 amps. It says for 18 minutes. The max pulse discharge current is 
5C, 125 amps. And then there's some other little random things down here on the bottom and your torque specs for the nuts. Alrighty, so to test these cells, we are gonna be using an iCharger X6. We're gonna attempt a 1C discharge and probably charge. And um, I guess we're gonna check the voltage and temperature and then maybe if we could check the internal resistance with my XTAR Dragon VP4 Plus. I don't even know if that'll work, but we'll try it. All right, we're gonna check the voltage first. Now I did label all these one, two, three, four, and I'll put it all in a spreadsheet just for you guys to download if you're interested. On the top here, you can see this one is marked with a positive and this one is marked with a negative. Cell one is 3.292. Cell two is 3.292. Cell three, 3.292. Cell four is also 3.292. All right, we're gonna attempt the internal resistance with the XTAR Dragon VP4 Plus. Cell number one. Five, four milliohms. Three milliohms. Cell number two. Five milliohms. Cell number three. Six milliohms. Five, it went to five. And cell number four. Five milliohms. All right, we're gonna go with five. All right, next thing we're gonna do is weigh the cells and they should be around 660 grams plus or minus 20. Cell number one, 658.3. Cell number two, 662.4. Cell number three, 660.1. And cell number four, 662.3. .3. And if anybody was wondering if the positive or negative is touching the case, if I do it in this mode right here, there is no connection. All right. However, if I change it back in this mode, you get some kind of jumps around and flashes. But if you swap the leads around, it goes to zero. Same for the positive. Zero this way, you swap the leads around and it kind of jumps around. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is kind of jankily put this together with some copper wire here. We're gonna connect all the positives together and all the negatives together and charge them up so we can do a nice top balance before we start doing a discharge test. Again, this is not the correct way to do all this, but it's just something simple, quick, and easy to do. So what we're gonna do here is just line them all up. And I'm gonna put a little red dot on the positive side just to make it a little easier to identify. And I might as well do the negative side while I'm here. And if you are going to do something as janky as this, just be a little careful because the positive and negatives are so close, you don't want to short it out. I just kind of threw these together real quick and that should work just fine. The torque spec for these is 5.5 newton meters, which is around 44 inch pounds. And there we go. That's all we're doing is just paralleling the cells so we can charge them up and top balance them. All right, so I changed the settings so it'll charge up to 3.65 volts. All right, so I'm going to let this charge up and top balance. All right, so let's do a quick temperature test here. In Fahrenheit, they are 66.5 degrees, 19.2 degrees C. All right, now we have the iCharger X6 hooked up to the lead acid battery. Now what we're gonna be doing next is doing a regenerative discharge test. We're gonna be taking power from these and recharging the lead acid battery. Now I could hook this up into a 4S, which would be a 12 volt, and then set it to a 1C discharge, which would be 25 amps. You know, in theory, it would be 25 amps discharging from this and recharging that battery. And obviously, since I'm inside my house, I don't want to recharge a lead acid battery at 25 amps because the off-gassing would be ridiculous. And speaking of off-gassing, I understand this is a lead acid battery indoors. It's not recommended, so please don't do it. I do have an exhaust system, which I will be hooking up. And this little duct right here will be sitting over the battery to extract any sort of off-gassing and sending it outside. All right, so what we're gonna do here is hook up my two battery cables to one battery. And of course, we will hook up some balance leads as well. And then we will get this party started.
Alright, so on the eye charger, we're going to choose option 3, at least on mine, which is the Life PO4. And we're going to go down to Discharge, and it is set for Regenerative. And we are on 25 amps, so that'll be 1C for this battery. And the low cutoff is set for 2 volts, since that's what the specs say. So we will give that a try and see what we have. Alright, so we're going to hit Start, and Yes. Now it's asking if I want to do regenerative. Yes, we do. Starting voltage is 3.595. Here we go. All right, so we're showing just under 25 amps. And we'll check it with this meter. And on here it's showing 25.92 amps. And I'm also gonna check on this side as well. And on here it's showing 4.9 amps charging the battery which reminds me I need to hook up my, my tube real quick. All right, we are almost halfway through and we have pulled out 12.8 amp hours. Battery voltage is still at 3.152 right down here. And of course we're still pulling 25 amps. All right, so at the halfway point, 12 amp hours in, the battery is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is working great, actually. Top of the cell looks good. The only thing that's a little warm is the battery cables coming out of the eye charger. Lead acid battery is still 57 degrees. And while the other ones are doing the discharge test, I figured I would use the sketchy antimatter to recharge the cells after they're done being capacity checked. So that's what I'm doing with this in the background. And it's set for 25 amps. And if I put this on here, it's showing 26.3 amps charging. All right, so here are gonna be all the results. So up here in the top corner, I've got it listed as 25 amp hour Navitas Life PO4 Prismatic Cells. Right below that, we have the basic information whenever I first got the cells and did those initial tests. Right below that, we have test one and test two, and both of these tests were done at a 1C discharge, which is 25 amps. Now test one and test two were at a full charge voltage of 3.65 volts and the low cutoff voltage was two volts. Pretty much because that's what the spec sheet on battery hookup says. So that's what we went with. All right, so down below that we have all the relevant information and then at the bottom we have the capacity in amp hours. All four tested above 26 amp hours. Pretty much the same thing for test two. However, test two, uh, my cell one was 25.856, so that was my lowest cell. And then over here for cell four, I didn't notice my lead acid battery was about full charge. So the 25 amp discharge that I attempted on here, um, it did go down just a little bit. I didn't actually see what it went to. So the time took a little bit longer. We still ended up above 26 amp hours. And then I did one more test over here. Now the main difference between test three and test one and two is the start and cutoff voltages. I changed it to more of a real world type of situation of 3.4 and the low cutoff of 2.5. And of course, if you look right at the top, you can see I did a different discharge rate for each one of these tests just to see how it would turn out, all right? And they all pretty much are in the 25 amp hour range except for cell four, that one is still being discharged right now. So whenever that test is done, I will enter it in here. But so far it looks like everything is right on spec for 25 amp hours. I'm kind of in love with these batteries. Is that bad to say? So obviously my opinion on if they're worth it, they are actually a little bit more expensive per kilowatt hour, but there's actually quite a few benefits to having smaller cells like this. 
even though they are a little more expensive now that I kind of worked out the price, which I don't have here in front of me, but I will maybe post it up on the screen or whatever. The reason why I like these cells kind of so much is you can pull a crap ton of power from this little tiny cell. I mean, 5C, you know, for like 18 seconds or something, but under regular use, 1C or even 3C, I mean, that's a lot of power. So the optional discharge rate is, is pretty awesome. If you had a power wall full of these cells, we'll say like a 275 amp hour, somewhere around there, 48 volt pack or really any pack, that would be 11 in parallel. These will kind of act like the cylindrical cells, 18650 cells, and they will keep all the other batteries in parallel, kind of in check versus the 280 amp hour, you know, you only get one battery. With this, you'll have 11 or 12 batteries in parallel, and they're not gonna deviate a whole lot. With a bigger battery that aren't in parallel, I should say, there's more of a deviation between each cell. So that is one benefit to getting a crap ton of these. Third ones being lithium iron phosphate. These are a hell of a lot safer than my power wall I have now, for sure. And I'm pretty sure I had another one, but I can't really think of it at this moment. So what are your guys' opinions on these batteries? What are your thoughts on my testing methods? Did I leave something out? Did I totally mess it up? Please let me me know in the comment section if I missed something because if I did obviously I would like to fix that before I make the next battery video now I know battery hookup is out of these at this current moment if you're watching this video but here in the next couple of days or let's say a week or so they should be getting another shipment now I'm not gonna say you guys should or shouldn't get these batteries you guys are big boys and girls you can make that own decision however if they do go on sale and you do want them you better act fast. The last shipment of these, I think they were gone like super, super fast. I do think I am going to at least get 12 more so I can make a small 48 volt pack, you know, for random stuff around here. That would be the minimum I would buy. If I had enough money, I would personally get like 172 of these or somewhere close to that so I could make a 275 or 300 amp hour battery. I think that would just be cool as hell. It would be safe. I mean, look at these things. You can't go wrong. I guess the only thing you do have to buy is nuts and or washers, depending on what nuts you get. I got the cheap nuts because I'm cheap and I just wanted to do some testing. Um, if I were to get a bunch of these, I would definitely get the serrated flange nuts. And I would order them online because Ace Hardware is expensive, even just for the nuts that I got. So here is my pitch. If you're interested in getting these cells and plan to get a couple for testing or a whole bunch for a power wall, you could save 5% if you use my discount code BOOM at checkout. It's definitely not required, but much appreciated because it does give me a little kickback here. It helps me buy batteries like this to test out and or other batteries that I have over here that are gonna be next. It's not required, but much appreciated. I would love to hear you guys' feedback on these cells. If you bought some or you tried to get some and they were already out, you're in luck because there's gonna be another shipment here anytime. If you are showing up to this video late, ah, you missed out. These are some really great cells, in my opinion. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe only if you thought this video was useful, helpful, or only a thumbs up if you thought it was good. And I'll see you on the next one. Feliz Navitas. <laughs> I don't know. Navitas, Navitas. And, um, 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 kind, you know, kind, you know, in regards, um, um,